You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. Our topic for this segment of our program is Dave Hunt's book, Yoga and the Body of Christ, What Position Should Christians Hold? And we're concerned about yoga's popularity within Christianity, not only because it's a religion that is in direct opposition to biblical Christianity, but its growing acceptance by many Christians indicates there is a critical lack of discernment in the evangelical church today. So no matter where you stand on the issue, hopefully we can provide information about the subject that you'll find helpful. Dave, why would it be necessary, and obviously some thought it to be very necessary, to create a, quote, spiritual emergency network, end of quote, with centers around the country complete with hotlines and lists of licensed mental health professionals who are on call? Tom, uh, this was started mainly by Christina Groff, and along with her husband, Stanislaw. And um, there were so many people who were experiencing spiritual emergencies. They were, as the hippies used to say, freaking out. They were having uh, demonic experiences, to mm-hmm. put it bluntly. Uh, they were, um, wow, seeing demons. They were... Uh, on the verge of insanity uh, and having horrible, horrible experiences as a result of practicing yoga. Not just from drugs, of course, you expect that from drugs, but um, from Eastern meditation. We talked about it in some prior programs, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, TM, Transcendental Meditation. Uh, So many of the practitioners of that, some of them went insane or ended up in insane asylums. Some of them uh, committed suicide. Uh, you remember the young lady we uh, interviewed at one time, and suddenly there is a demon on each side of her trying to get in as she's practicing TM. So the Groffs started this, and they eventually uh, had a network. Yeah. Of David, let me give you uh, some information from their promotional material. It says, train graduate students in the School of Professional Psychology at the California Institute for Integral Studies. Respond to each caller, providing assistance and educational information regarding spiritual emergence. They can also make referrals to licensed mental health professionals in the caller's area. It goes on to say, uh, the advisors are respectful of spiritual experience, familiar with a number of spiritual traditions, and qualified to work with various areas of difficulty. Now, Tom, you, the term that they use is spiritual emergence. Mm-hmm. They're not talking about spiritual emergency. So they are trying to say, well, this is all good. You see, you are emerging mm-hmm. into a higher level of spirituality. And, of course, you're going to have nightmares and you're going to have visions and Mm -hmm. demonic appearances. Well, that's just part of this process. Uh, So they're not really uh, going to discourage you. It says, oh, they're familiar with all of these traditions. They're not going to say anything is right or anything is wrong, but they're just trying to nurse you through, you know. Uh, And um, that's so tragic. But uh, this is demonic stuff. Now, the reason for it is we've got Satan himself, the serpent, involved, and he plays a huge part in yoga. Well, Dave, that brings us to uh, the title for Chapter 6 of your book. You title it, The Great Dragon, That Old Serpent. And, uh, you know, but but before I, I get to that, I'm sure there are people out there think, man, I never heard of any of this stuff. You know, I thought yoga was just, you know, I was just going to the the YMCA to to do some stretching exercises. Or to the local Baptist church. Well, now that's the situation, not just Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, and so on. They don't have to go to the YMCA anymore. It's it's right there. And as we've seen and we've talked about, 
uh, these programs are growing in popularity. You have more people showing up in, in, in some churches for yoga exercises than they do for Bible studies, that kind of stuff. That's what concerns us. Mm-hmm. Well, Tom, uh, we've talked about in the past. We know where yoga comes from. It is pure Hinduism. Mm-hmm. It was devised because they're trying to escape time, sense, and the elements and reach moksha. Uh, it's called, uh, Buddhists call it nirvana. They're trying to get beyond uh, this physical body and this physical world. Uh, in fact, it is not uh, anything that was developed to improve anyone's health or physical fitness. It is, in fact, a technique for dying, technique for getting out of this body uh, into the next reincarnation, mm-hmm. or depending upon what they may believe in. Uh, so, uh, Tom, um, people are being deceived, and now somebody can say, well, I've been practicing yoga for 10 years, and didn't bother me. I didn't have any of this. Well, okay, but uh, many, many people do have mm-hmm. problems. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, uh, who knows what spiritual delusions this person has embraced through yoga. Yeah. Hey, David, I just want to comment about uh, the, what you said about yoga is not for health. Uh, we you know, just had a conference, as you know, and uh, Carol Matriciano was here. Uh, she's the producer of uh, of a video that we offer on yoga, which is really terrific. But she grew up in India. And one of the things in talking to her, one of the things that she said, uh, I mean, logically, based on what we've been saying, I, I should have thought of this. But she said, you know, Tom, growing up in India, and <clears throat> obviously yoga, being Hinduism, mm-hmm. it was a part of life there, but it was never a part of life for young people. It was always for older people who, you know, because it had to do with death and dying, not right, for right. developing physical health. Right. And yet that's what it's being promoted as right. in the United States. And, and even in India today, I mean, which is interesting. So the, the, the real theology behind it is being um, really overturned. But getting on to chapter chapter six, the which you titled "The Great Dragon, That Old Serpent." That old serpent, the devil. This is Revelation chapter twelve, mm-hmm. who deceives the whole world, and uh, it's interesting that Satan, he kind of likes to be called the serpent. You'd think he would try to avoid that, mm-hmm. but instead, he is worshipped in the form of a serpent all over this world. And that's kind of what we get into in this chapter. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to uh, just underscore some of these things, the religions of the world and how they've taken uh, the lie uh, of the serpent to Eve and turned it into uh, a blessing. In other words, Satan is worshipped not because people are into satanic worship, but because in in the historical process of him of the lie and the deceit involved, mm-hmm. now this has become a good thing. So, but Dave, there's a couple of things I'd like you to address in this. Number one, it really demonstrates that this was a historical event. Why would these people in all of these religions, from South America to the, uh, I mean, all over the world, the Greek, the Roman gods, to the Norse gods, and so on? There's a serpent involved in some way. What? Did somebody just come up with that? Uh, these, in, these cultures, independent of one another, all have the same idea? Well, Tom, I was um, speaking about this, I forget when, at a church, and a man came up to me afterwards. And, uh... For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website 